speaking of suppositories, Mark Levin, um, who um, I, I'm fairly certain spends a good deal of time up his own ass, um, has, uh, has come to save us. Mark Levin is here to save us all. I live in fear. Thank you, Mark Levin. You are my human inner tube. Um, throw it into the waters, the choppy floodwaters of life to drag me to shore. Um, you're, you'll be shocked by this title, I have no doubt. You'll be completely overwhelmed by this title. Biden is destroying our country. Mark Levin. Um, by the way, he fucking well is not. Unless, of course, his what he means by our country is not America. And uh, maybe he's talking about Russia. Maybe he's talking about the country they were trying to create, which is kind of this old Wild West mentality, mentality uh, you know, I, I can't even imagine him wanting a tougher world than he lives in. Like him and fucking Ted Cruz and and Tucker Carlson, they're all so fucking macho in when they talk. But none of them would ever survive in a time where everything wasn't spoon-fed to them. Um, oh, hold on. Let me open this up. There we go. Reagan used to ask the question. Uh-huh. Are you better off today than you were four years ago? Um, yes. Thanks for asking. So I'll ask the question. Are you better off today than you were four years ago? Is the country better off today than it was four years ago under President? Well, the uh, uh, employment's down and wages are up. That's true. Obviously, we're dealing with the... Um, see, four years ago, I don't know if you guys remember, um, we were about a year and a half away from a massive pandemic. We were walking blindly into a rake with no support. We thought we were doing great, sort of. I mean, unless, you know, you're a woman or you're gay or you're trans or you want expanding social rights and um, or you're, uh, I don't know, George Floyd's family. Uh, but, the you know, a bunch of people were like, this sucks. He's an asshole. Uh, but, you know, we're recovering from 2008 still and, and economically still a bit of an upswing. There's, you know, back and forth about stuff. And then uh, it turns out we, we were, were we ever so innocent? The pandemic response team had been dismantled four years ago. The cop system, which would have gotten rid of people like Derek Chauvin, perhaps even saving George Floyd's life. We, it was, they were all being dismantled while we were working. And uh, we were just try, everybody was just trying to make their way as best they could. And then we stepped on the rake. Well, let's take a look at these dismal numbers. Dismal Ugh. numbers, and we're still Dismal. heading south. Dis Consumer prices, the price that you pay rose 8.5% in March. Eight uh, no, it fucking well did not. Prices did not go up 8.5% in one fucking month. It reached 8.5% year over year from before Delta and before vaccination. Literally at the time when the Biden administration was ramping up vaccinations and we were still basically locked down. And they're like, we're going to go out. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. If that's the highest in 40 years. Yes, you all remember the Great Plague of 1980. When they were coming out in 1981, when we were coming out of the, the, the disco plague that had torn the country to pieces. Eight and a half percent. The Consumer Price Index, which measures a wide-ranging basket of goods and services, jumped eight and a half percent from a year ago on an... Yeah, from year over year, fucko. Unadjusted basis. Oh, on an unadjusted basis. The data reflect price rises not seen in the U.S. since the stagflation days of the late 70s 
in the early 80s. March's headline reading, in fact, was the highest since December 1981. Core inflation was the hottest since August 1982. You're feeling this. You so, uh, by the way, apparently Jeff Cox just wants to throw the 70s stagflation in there, even though the, mar the numbers don't match that. And we've talked about this before. Look, you're not downplaying the reality of inflation caused by supply shock, COVID, the war, gas prices, all that kind of stuff, which have fuck all to do with U.S. policy. Um, let's see. CPI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see if there's a... Um, by the way, I lived through the seventies. Anybody, anybody here lived through the seventies? Anybody remember the seventies? Remember how the seventies ended with fucking, it, it wasn't exactly, oh, okay, here we go. Here's 1970. Um, and if you'll notice, look at, here's, here's uh, 2008 when everything took a shit, um, which was all monetary, by the way. And then here's uh, 2014 when it went way down. And then here we are in 2020. This is uh, inflation over here. Largely, the cost of gas still drove stuff up for a time being and whatever. And then it, and then it was just in unavailability. You had money to spend and people were willing to pay to get to the front of the line in the United States. So we went up. But if you look at this, look at the comparison here. That's what he's talking about. Um, this is 1980, 13% year over fucking year. Which stacked on top of uh, the year before. Whoops. Annualized uh, year. There you go. 6.5% in 77. Hold on. Why are these off by a little bit? Get out of here. Okay. I guess I have to go here. 1980, 13.5%. Get out of here. What are you doing? Why well, want to take my mouse? Take it. Take it. You bastard. Um, so, raggeda, raggeda. We've been kind of humping along fine. And then this is... This is worldwide right here. Now, now this is U.S. dollar inflation since 1970. This is 2022. Okay, this is the from here to here. This is year over year, here to here. This is year over year. Uh, inflation in 1970 was 5.72. We've maintained the goal has been to keep it around two percent for a long time. That was monetary policy post Reagan. They've been ha hanging on to that, jacked up uh, here, and then it went back down. None of these were preceded by a pandemic, for the record. Um. There you go. Buying power. This is this is what it looks like. Now, do you see a huge difference between, let's say, here and here and here and here and here and here? Like, there's definitely, like, here's 2020. Uh, this adjusted. Does anything look interesting to that? Does that, if you squint, look like any big fucking deal or just, quite frankly, the direction of of costs. So, anyways. There you go. Buying power of $1. It's, it's basically the same time. It looped down in 1981 and then it evened out. Basically, it's maintained fairly well, considering. Um, 74 was 11%. Okay, now. This is the question, though. Let me look over here. Um, let's see. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold on one second. Uh, where are we? I'll put on the news thing. Hold on. Bringing something up. Um. Hold on. There we go. Get out of here. Sorry, I'm trying to get the ads out of the way. Russia's... Oh. Russia's Putin. Demand inflation is normalizing. Yes. It is normally going to fucking suck for a long time. Um, ruble has stabilized. No, it hasn't. 
They've been trying to back it by gold. Basically, they're trading on gold. The ruble isn't worth shit. It's an internal currency now. Cash Forex is flowing back to Russian banks. Uh huh. Retail demand in Russia has normalized. Yes, normally people clamor for sugar. Inflation in Russia has stabilized. Uh huh. Because it's central bank top down economics. It is what we say it's worth. Till shit needs to come from outside the country and then. Pfft. Uh, unemployment in Russia is low. <laughs> yeah, well, it's. Because certainly not a lot of, uh, there's fewer employable men 18 to 35 than there were a couple months ago by about 20,000. Central bank rate cuts will make lending in the economy cheaper. Uh, yeah, you think? Budget should uh, should support uh, ec economy liquidity. Good luck with that. Um, that. Why can't we have an economy like Russia's, Levin? Tell them. This already. Due to the surge in inflation, worker wages, despite rising 5.6% from a year ago, weren't keeping pace with the cost of living. No! 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 They're not! No! Now, granted, um, those wages will stay, and the cost of oil and gas will go down. When energy costs go down, people will maintain that wage change. See how that works? Something goes up um, eight and a half percent, and your wages go up five point six percent. Last time I. So basically, you're in the three percent range of normal inflation. Then fuck. Check. That's almost a. Th uh, um, by the way, uh, regular infl inflation has gone down since it was. It's, it wasn't. It's not still fourteen fucking percent like it was in 1980. So obviously, it can come down. But once your wages go up, they stay that way percent gap food rose one percent for the month 8.8 percent .8 over the years prices for goods such as rice ground beef citrus fruits and fresh vegetables all posted gains of more than two percent in march and it yes if you mix all kinds of foodstuffs as if they're equal prices were up 11 percent and 32 percent respectively as gasoline prices popped 18.3 percent for the month Oh my God, it's almost as if that's exactly why foodstuffs are more expensive because you, ha you have to bring them to your fucking face. Price gains in clothing, services, excluding energy and medical care, each which increased 0.6% for the month. Mm -hmm. Trans that's, that's by, uh, by the way, why they, why they adjust it for, in, yeah. Transportation services also rose 2%, bringing its 12-month gain to 7 Transportation services went up uh, 2%, considering fuel went up 18%. 7%. These are monthly increases. Soaring gas... No, no, yes. The 7.7 7 isn't, though, fucko. ...prices are forcing some Uber and Lyft drivers off the road. You can't, when, you, when prices for gasoline what, what are did, going what? up almost 20% a month? Twenty percent a month. Think what that means. Food prices. More on food prices. Here are items more predicted. On. Yes, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Levin's more on food prices. Cost a whole lot more at grocery stores. I'm going through the various news items: poultry and eggs, Are, fat. Yes, I, I, we we see the word items, Mark. Poultry and eggs, fats and oils. Well, shit. Somebody call Madison Cawthorn. Cancel the orgy. Oils, fruits and vegetables, non-alcoholic beverages, you know, like... Hold on. Non-alcoholic. He said alcoholic. I feel seen. Fats and oils, fruits and vegetables, non-alcoholic beverages, you know, like... That's right. Non-alcoholic. <laughs> what? Milk, sugar and sweets, cereal and bakery, and may I mention meat. Supply... No, no, you may not. It wasn't listed in that. You're making it up. You just wanted to mention meat. Prices rose 11.2%. What are those? This is called the producer price index. This affects you too. The prices that goods and services... And, and by the way, uh, no, it doesn't. The PPI is not linked to regular inflation any more than printing uh, money for the monetary policy. All these fuckers who are telling you that we're printing too much money and it's driving prices up. First of all, 
uh, have no idea what's going on. Our inflation is not economic. It is based on supply shock and demand and fuel costs. It has nothing to do with regular, like, I got a lot of money, so I'm going to buy my way to the front of the line on everything. That's not how it works. We don't have that kind of money. So, that, I mean, that's that could explain the rise in prices on used cars, and that's it. The, P- the PPI does not is not getting passed along. Producers receive, like wholesalers, rose in March at the fastest pace since records have been kept. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported the right. producer. Yes, it's it's almost as if we're recovering from a pandemic and the economy is righting itself. I'm kidding. They printed a lot of money and people have too much. Don't you realize Mark Levin wants to save you from all the piles of money you have? Price index, which measures the prices paid by wholesalers. Increased. Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me. I Look, I've been on a lot of cruise ships. And I've been, I visited a couple of like moored military ships. I have not met any wholesalers. Producer price index, which measures the prices paid by wholesalers. Incre- <laughs> I thought wholesalers get paid. Am I wrong? <laughs> Ho's got to eat. Ho's gotta- <laughs> the producer price index, which measures the prices paid by wholesalers, increased 11 <laughs> point. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's clearly saying wholesalers. <laughs> but not even try. I'm sure wholesalers do it better. 2% from a year ago. The most... In a data series going back to November 2010 on a monthly basis. Not, not 2010, not a pre-pandemic year. The gauge climbed 1.4%, stripping out food, energy, and trade services. Although I don't know Uh why you would strip out food and energy. And trade services, well, first of all, trade services uh, are, because nobody's traveling and there's all kinds of, you know, uh, back and forth, the cost of a boxcar and that kind of shit. And then, of course, uh, energy, stripping that out because not everybody drives. A lot of big cities, for example, commuters can make up that cost by taking the train or those kind of things. So you take that out or you lower it to a, a you know, take the inflation aspect of it out, not the ultimate cost. And then stripping out food um, because the cost of it hasn't increased PPI-wise. It seems to me to be the biggest. So-called core... PPI or producer price index rose 0.9 percent on a monthly basis. That's where you get the 10 or 11 percent on an annual basis. That's excluding oh. food and energy. Supply chain crisis continues. We never had a supply chain crisis. A whole ho- well, we've never reshored almost every industry from China in one fell swoop, fucko. The Biden policy decision, says the former Secretary of Transportation. Uh, Elaine- what? El- Elaine Chow says that something is Biden's fault? My God. Why won't that woman's husband speak to her and tell her how she should speak? Oh, right. Chow under Donald Trump. And what are those whole host of Biden policy decisions? They've been telling you that our ports Let's are working it. 24-7. I'll give you an example. Long Beach has seven. One is working 24-7. Why? By the way, this is, this is ancient fucking news. There's not a huge backup at our ports. Um, hold on. I have to do this real quick. Ron, I think Ron Filipowski had this up. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, he, uh, he's uh, he posted so much shit, it's gonna be hard to find. Um. Yeah, here you go. With Shanghai in protracted total COVID lockdown. Hi, Ron. Um, by the way, great, great work with this picture. Uh, these are the ships currently stuck waiting to be loaded or offloaded. Supply chain, fuel costs, and inflation is a global problem being driven by many factors, including war. Biden isn't the cause of record gas prices in Japan. This is outside of Shanghai. This is the port, this is the port backup. It ain't over here.
Now, part of me, honestly, part of me thinks Levin's too fucking stupid to know this. On the other hand, I don't think he would care to look to make sure he wasn't talking out of his ass. Look at that. These are all parked ships like in circulation. So how long they've been sitting there over a period of time. Uh, the ones that are moving, the ones that are totally moored, the ones that are kind of like drifting. Honestly, does anybody think boats and hose? Right, Mike. Um, does anybody think this asshole even bothered to look? All working 24-7 because of union rules for the longshoremen. Because of environmental rules in California. Fuck. They Fucking unions and the environmentalists, man. Blowing it for everybody. How am I supposed to get my portable uh, testicle tanner? You know, I, I was I put that in my goals to start that this week. And it's sitting out there like four boats deep. Fuck it, I'm a bootstrap it and get in a rowboat and go out and get it myself. It work 24-7. What's Joe Biden doing about that? Absolutely nothing. Just another group he's bought and paid for. Oh, oh I, his group he's bought and paid for. Yeah, you, you union uh, dock workers and uh, yeah. Yeah, you're just bought and paid for by Biden. You're just, you're, you're a bunch of suckers and losers. For by. Biden, new plan to fight inflation. Remember he talked about going after big meat? And now it's big oil? And of course... Uh, no, no, I don't remember him calling it big meat, but I'm glad you did. All of this has to do with Putin. Everything that's... In I'm sorry, with who? And of course, all of this has to do with Putin. Every... I, I'm sorry. <laughs> you... The, the, um, can you speak into my good ear? Big oil? And of course, all of this has to do with Putin. Everything that's in short supply, everything uh -huh. where inflation is going through the roof, where the currency yeah. is being debased by deficit spending, it's on Putin. Mm -hmm. Look, Putin's a monster. He's committed atrocities of the worst kind. He's a... Yeah, but, but you gotta understand... Mark had to go out to dinner at a at a steak place with Sean Hannity, and Sean made him pick up the fucking check. And they they didn't they had like they didn't have his normal filet mignon. I mean, it was a it was a skirt steak. It was stepped on. It was a of maniac. But, but that does not give Biden a pass on what he's doing to our country internally. His policies are destroying the United States of America. They are destroying our economic system. They're destroying your pensions. They're destroying... Yes, and by the way, so far the policies that he has named uh, is a strategy to open the ports that was used last August, which is totally not necessary right now, and apparently saying things like big meat and big oil. For salary... You are receiving whatever bonuses you receive. They're driving up mm -hmm. medical costs. They're creating food shortages. That's true. If you if you if you if you show up at your doctor's like Mark does and ask for a hot meat injection, you're going to be waiting a long time. Next thing you know, listen to me. We're going to have brownouts and blackouts and gas shortages. What are we going to do? Yeah, like we did in the seventies. Even in odd days, you can fill up your car. It's coming, and it's not because. Russia invaded Ukraine. It's because no. the Democrats invaded the Oval Office in Congress. These are their policies at work. Remember what they said. They embraced What'd Bernie they Sanders, who you don't hear from anymore. Gee, I wonder why. I think they embraced him to death. I, I think they embraced him too tightly. They gave him a big squeeze and they're like, and it just, yeah. He embrace broke. this Marxist agenda of rejiggering the entire society, of destroying Yes, yes, that's what it is. Biden is guilty of rejiggering the entire society. That's what it is. It's a mass jiggering. Fuels. You remember that document about 120 pages in length that Bernie Sanders and Biden put out? The most radical screed in American political history? It could have been written. 
Well, clearly not. I mean, there was an American Communist Party and the Nazis actually, uh, you know, gathered in New York City. They had some demands as well. Also, the the Confeder- the uh, Constitution of the Confederacy is a bit fucked. So. Marks and Angles. That's what they're instituting. Whether it's cultural, whether it's economic, whether it's political, mm-hmm. whether it's immigration, they're going through. Well, if that's the case, why doesn't he nationalize the oil and just pass it the fuck out? If this is Marxist socialism, communism, commie, commie, then why doesn't Biden just say, okay, everybody gets, you know, this is how much food we got. We'll just pass it out to Americans. We're just going to socialize the entire thing. This is just silly. This, his staff, the people he has surrounded himself with, who are the radicals of the radicals, this is what uh-huh. they're instituting. U.S. Do- government debt. U.S. government debt, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the deficit went down last year. It was over $30 trillion. Um, our economy is somewhere in the order of $26 trillion a year. A year. Our total debt is $30 trillion. Every year, the United States takes in or moves around $30 trillion in, in like, if you combine, like, what's, like, interest that's made on stuff versus things that are bought and sold. We have an enormous fucking economy. It's doubled since 2000. We used to have, uh, like, what was it, a... Eight trillion dollar economy and ten trillion dollars worth of debt, and everybody's like, "Fuck me!" And then we're like, "We've got a twenty six trillion dollar economy, and we've got thirty trillion dollars worth of debt." You see anything about that that looks similar? Yeah, it's 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 a base percentage. When Biden took office, it was about twenty three trillion dollars. That's because of the budget from Trump's last year, fucko. Three trillion dollars. It's Dear unimaginable. God. I can I can imagine it actually. Doing it right now. Kind of looks like a cash version of the last scene in Raiders. Percentage of the GDP we haven't seen since the height of World War II, and we are surpassing. Hold on. Yeah, but we're possibly on the edge of World War Three, and dealing with the biggest land war in Europe since World War Two. The fuck? In peacetime, relative peacetime. That's not... Rel- yeah, thank, you. thank you for that caveat. I don't know if you guys noticed. Uh, it's relative peacetime. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's, it's like uh, when your relatives are at peace, and that includes uh, your uh, third cousin who's sleeping on your couch who goes into a drunken stupor and beats the fuck out of everybody. Relative peacetime. One. Number two, the interest on this debt is... By the way... Relative peacetime. We're literally engaged in the biggest European uh, land war since World War II. And we've just come out of a pandemic. And our economy is recovering better than everybody else's. We're half of the uh, of the positive infl- uh, inflation rate of China, of Russia, of most European countries. It's just goofy. Interest rates go up as they must because the currency is being devalued with inflation. As the- no, it is not. There aren't enough fucking dollars in the world. Interest rates go up. We have to pay the interest on this debt. This takes a bigger and bigger percentage of the federal budget. They haven't even started raising... Uh, the fucking interest is like a quarter of a point. We haven't had high interest rates for over a decade. Now they're going to start to kick in. So you... Yeah, now they're going to start to kick in. Oh yeah, they're going to be half a point. That's not even true. So you're going to see high inflation. You're going to uh-huh. start to see shortages. By the way, interest rates, raising interest rates is one of the things the Fed does to lower inflation. You're going to see costs going way up. Uh-huh. Supplies going way down. This is the oh, horror dear. that is created by the left. Horror. When they oh, abuse no. the laws of economics. The laws of economics are just as correct as the laws of physics. You can't change them with legislation. First of all, the fuck they are. Economics are are part psychology. They're easily manipulated. You're you're dealing with other currencies the world over. The Chinese currency is completely manufactured. 
as far as it's worth. Get the fuck out of here. It's not physics. Can't change them with borrowing. Mankind is Yes, yes, you can. If you can't change them with borrowing, then who gives a shit if you borrow? How would it lower the 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 amount the, the volume of money in the in in the economy? Experience this sort of thing before. Whether in Germany or Zimbabwe or Venezuela or wherever you look, you keep no, we haven't. That sovereign foreign debt that wasn't accrued, it, it, that was all accrued at separate times. Like the fucking Germans attacked the world. Venezuela and Zimbabwe got into those messes specifically, one through a civil war and one through the, the mismanagement of natural resources. Good Lord. Printing money and printing money and printing money. You We're not printing money. We're not. Fucking, the Fed made money on the 2008 crash. Even with the losses, the loans paid back more than they took. Creating economic dislocations. You keep creating situations where people don't know where to put their money. They don't know what to invest in. Research and capital, they're not sure where to go and so forth and so There you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the reality. A man who knows fuck all about the market is concerned about the best place to make a lot of money on the dip. And this guy, like a lot of these assholes, is rooting for a crash because that's the big dumb way of making a lot of money on the stock market. You know it's going to come back. You know it's going to come around and you just want to like find, make the whole thing shit the bed so everybody can, so you can throw your money at it because you're, you've got cash because you're fucking on Fox. God damn. This is crazy. You're having a war against fossil fuels. Am I? What happens? You get less fossil fuel. We were energy. Oh, oh. So, so Biden gave out 34% more leases in his first year than Trump did in his first year opened up more public land and has 9,000 standing leases on public and private land because he's at war with, okay. Tenant, 18 months ago, 15 months ago. Now we're begging Venezuela and Saudi Arabia for oil? No, we're not. We're asking them to increase supply so it lowers the price for everyone on fucking earth. Because guess what? I don't know if you know this, but... The, the ships that come here from China and Southeast Asia and Korea and South America and uh, that come from Europe to bring goods and services over here, you know those ships? We don't fill those with oil. We don't fill those with fuel. They do it in their own fucking countries. And if the price goes up, it goes up you it, across the world. And so if you increase the supply, it brings that down. And that lowers prices for everyone, including us. But those assholes, if there's no oil, if there's no fuel for those ships, we can't just make some and give it to them to get our shit over here quicker. Although kind of that's what we do when we uh, release stuff from the strategic reserves. That's our, our sort of hope. We, we play favorites a little bit is the theory. But not to the Chinese boats. How the fuck does this asshole not know? Oh, Putin didn't do that. Joe Biden did that. Chuck Schumer did that. Nancy Pelosi. Also, Putin? Did that. The Democrat Party did that. That's who did that. Never forget. So, we have around 30... Jesus Christ. Does, it, does this pass for a show on this network? It's 13 minutes of this dick yelling. Life, Liberty, and Levin. Is he on on Saturdays or something? I thought this was, like... Just relegated to, like, is it, oh, I don't care. You know, Never $31 mind. trillion dollars in debt, and Biden wanted to add, I want you to remember, the Build Back Better nonsense, another $6 trillion. Where would we be today with that? Over 10 years. And all of those things have economic benefits. It's also paid for. That doesn't add anything to the debt. That's the way it's fucking written. Let's look at this country. Are we better today than we were four years ago. Cities across the U.S. are breaking all-time homicide records this year. Wow. And it's not just homicide. No, they're not. Chicago is down year over year from last year. 
and everything spiked from the pandemic on. And by the way, does anybody go outside? Does anybody remember the summer of 2020? Is that what your city looks like right now? Has it looked that way? Did it look that way last summer, for fuck's sake? Much less now. Do you think it's going to look that way this summer? Do you think we're going to have another summer of like a chop or a chads in fucking Seattle or fucking riots in Portland non-fucking stop or any of that stuff? Seriously. Because that's where we were four years ago. Two and a half. Two and change. And the, the literally the crime rate is basically at where it was in 2018. It's violent crime across the board, and it's not just violent crime. You see how people are stealing things from stores, willy-nilly and so forth. Utter lawless. Yes, I, I've never met willy-nilly, but he doesn't seem like a friendly guy. Yes. What's the Department of Justice doing? Chasing down parents in front of school boards. Going after... <laughs> yes, that's what they're doing. The Department of... Yeah, Merrick Garland has a big butterfly net, and he's chasing parents out of, uh, around in front of school boards, I guess just for show, for... Oh, you mean, I know what he's talking about. The ones that threaten to murder everybody. Republican legislatures where they disagree with what the will of the people have to say in a particular state about abortion or putting sensible voting laws back in place. What's the Department of Justice doing? They have 13,000 uh -huh. special agents in the FBI, give or take. 13,000. How many of them? Uh, uh, give or take. 13,000 are focused on going after people who are quote unquote parading or trespassing on January 6th. They say. All right, we've been through this shit before. About 150. The biggest investigation they have going today. The biggest one in the history of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Not terrorism, not the. No, 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 no. And first of all, it is terrorism. Uh, it's violence to an act of political will. Um, but meanwhile, um, it's the biggest investigation they've ever had because of the amount of shit they are dealing with. The amount of evidence. Each one of these motherfuckers filmed themselves committing crimes. They're in other people's videos. They have to coordinate the fact that in court, they're like, here's this asshole filming himself on Facebook. As soon as he put his phone down, you can see this is him from this other angle. He's walking in. This is where he hit the fucking cop with the uh, Blue Lives Matter flag. This is where he tased the dude. This is, here we go. Look at way back in the, Your Honor, if you do, we used our, um, our special software to center in on him. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's him. He's, that's him taking a shit in the corner of the rotunda. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor, he is yelling, Trump made me do it. We, but, uh, on a personal, the state does not believe that that is, uh, the case. We have no indication, technically or otherwise, although we understand the defense is bringing a medical witness, that, uh, Trump fed the man coffee and, and, uh, and bran muffins for a week. Before he came in. Bob, no, not sex crimes. Not the... the <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah, they've stopped looking at sex crimes entirely. It's weird. Yeah, they're not, they just stopped arresting people. The FBI just like, ah, fuck it. Who cares? Biden's in now, so... We're not, we're not investigating that shit anymore. Let it go. Mexican cartels, January 6th. So how many of those 13,000... Well, the FBI doesn't work on Mexican cartels, except if they're in the country. If they're Mexican cartels. They're outside the country. It's a different... Right. Special agents are busy looking at video. They say they've looked at 20,000 hours. Well, yeah, those would be uh, technical analysts. Those aren't the people. Those aren't field agents for the most part. But yeah, 150 of them. Video. We got to get those trespassers and those paraders. Yeah, we all agree about violent crime. Of course, the media don't and the left don't. They were all fine with violence in the summer of 20. Uh, no, I wasn't. And I'm not now. And fuck you. I mean, that after all was liberating. Now let's look. Are we better off today than we were four years ago? Look at Afghanistan, a horrific surrender. The result. Oh yeah, right. We're not in Afghanistan. I forgot all about that. Four years ago, we were in fucking Afghanistan. We're not in Afghanistan anymore. Mark, good job, buddy. Yeah, America is, was in Afghanistan for 20 fucking years. 
and we're not. In the murder of 13 American soldiers, look at Russia threatening to use nukes against us. Would they have done that under Donald Trump? Look at Iran. Well, they, no, you don't have to nuke your own Christmas presents. And getting nukes from this president, would they have gotten nukes under Donald Trump? No, they were barely. Iran isn't getting nukes under Biden. The idea is to stop them from getting them. They were developing them during Trump because he got out of the fucking deal. What, what was to stop them? Having under Donald Trump economically and otherwise. China uh -huh. producing more nukes than ever before. They weren't doing that under Trump either. I'd say our foreign policy. What? First of all, what the fuck are you talking about? China has not upped their nuke production in the last 18 months. Like there are, there are rando assertions that I can almost forget, you know, like forgive that he's just fucking dumb. But that's like such a weird reach. And so obviously ridiculous. Is, a, is an abject disaster. Absolute disaster. And a great... Yes, ab abject disaster. Because 3.6% unemployment is fucking terrible. Business is getting back to work. We're not locked down like China because most of our people are, are vaccinated and boosted. Threat to the United States. Look at our classrooms. The reason we have a parents movement. Because Joe Biden, the Democrat Party, and their big government teachers educational bureaucrats unions have taken control of that's right that's that is a huge union that's a lot of that's a mouthful i might have to take is there a teacher that will teach me how to say all that bullshit classrooms they don't want parents involved in the teaching of their little babies they're pushing trans I, I don't i don't know if you know this but you can't you don't teach babies in school there are no public schools for babies and grown men who talk about children as little babies creep me the fuck out. Terrorism <laughs> and sexualization. They're pushing critical race theory. They're pushing all kinds of the hard left Marxist agenda on your little kids. The one thing they're not pushing they? is education. And then we have these executive orders. Oh, yeah, the executive orders. This is where it gets like, I don't know why he's screaming, Annie. I just think this is fun. Um, do... Uh, Basically, this is just like an accumulation list of dead talking points or, or soon to be dead talking points. He's literally got shit from last summer that he's still selling. Destroying women's sports. Right. Title IX. Womenhood. Womenhood. We can't even define a woman anymore. Well, sure you can. I, I, like some people would define it as an adult human female. Um, and they just use that as the baseline. I would say it's more characteristic of the personality of the woman, uh, you know, of the female. They could be female, but not necessarily a woman. Hey, you might be a girl. Um, you, you, you might be technically an adult, but not quite a woman. You know what I mean? Kind of like how, you know, like, uh, like Tucker Carlson is an adult human male, but I wouldn't call him a man. You understand? Like you, Mark. I, I wouldn't call you a man. I wouldn't, you know, and therefore I can't define a descriptor. If a historic appointee were told a black woman to the Supreme Court of the United States right. who can't even define why she's historic, what am I talking about? She wouldn't define what a woman is. Why? She wouldn't define why she was historic? Oh, well, it's technically, Mark, and I know this frightens you, but she was historic because she was the first black woman, not the first woman. There's been other women. I don't know if you noticed. There's been several women on the court, you know, RBG. Uh, Justice Thomas. See, I can't even. It's a description. Because she wants to be free to rule in a radical left way when it comes. She wants to be free to rule in a radical. Oh, I see. Right. These ideologies. They are destroying womanhood and women's sports. Mm, something I never watch and I don't know, Mr. Producer. And then in my view, we have the most corrupt president in American history, potentially. Oh, potentially. Mayor of Moscow's wife invested three and a half million dollars in the Biden. Oh, by the way, this is the whole, uh, this is the Fox narrative, which is the most labored part of their day. Every day, getting up, trying to figure out how to square the circle that Joe Biden is a forgetful, doddering old codger who can't tie his shoes and doesn't know why he's in a room and can't finish a sentence 
who also is the mastermind behind a international crime syndicate that puts the mob, the triad, and all the cartels to shame. He's a, he's he's Doctor Evil meets uh, Don Corleone. Family, China, but he also uh, has uh, dementia. Invested tens of millions of dollars in the Biden family. Uh, the former Ukrainian regime invested millions of dollars in the Biden family. Uh, then, then why aren't they still the Ukrainian regime? If they invested all that money, I don't think they got what they paid for. As a matter of fact, I'm beginning to think that 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 Biden's like crazy like a fox. Like he fucked these guys. Because Yanukovych, let's just let's just play along with Mark's idea here that Yanukovych somehow was funneling money into the Bidens. What happened? He uh, Yanukovych had to uh, flee the country and he lives in Russia now. Uh, we don't know about Joe and Joe Biden's S corporations. They haven't released their tax. Yes, they have. Turns on that. Yes, they so have. They invested millions in the Biden family. Also, it, the S corps are for their book earnings. This isn't even news. What do we know about this other than what some of these intrepid know. reporters have God. been doing? What could it be? I Not enough. Say. Oh, no. Shouldn't we know? Yeah. If Joe Biden what? is the Manchurian candidate? Should yes, if he's the Manchurian candidate, because that's what the Chinese did. The Chinese, in their infinite wisdom, created, they 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 took a young Joe Biden. They, they took him off the train, and he's like, did I sleep that train right away? Uh, yes, you did, Joe. <laughs> wink, wink, dunk, dunk. And they picked him up, and they hypnotized him, and they dumped him back on the train. And then they hit him, and they, turned, and they skipped it. He thought he was just sleeping on a train year after year after year, when they were really just putting him in a chamber like the fucking... Uh, Winter Soldier, and he's biting a piece of leather, and they were just feeding information into Joe Biden's head to create him. Like, one day you will be president, Joe Biden, because everyone thinks so. We're putting all our eggs in your basket. And then you're gonna, you're, we're going to put you in the presidency, and you're going to do what we say. And what we want you to do for China is form a military alliance between the UK, the United States, Japan, and Australia to give Australia nuclear-powered sub-technology um, to protect Taiwan, send a delegate, recognize the country as a as uh, as a se recognize Taiwan as a separate country, and then um, fuck. Who thought up this plan? We know if he's been bought off and sold out. I think we should bought off and sold out. If he's been sold out. They sold him out. They fucking sold me out, but they bought me off. Just, I'm just flush with cash. I've been bought off and sold out. Which money do I spend first? There's more predicates here than you can throw a stone at to have a special counsel investigation. Are we better off today than we were four years ago? Hell no. The country's in grave straits. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Gra grave straits? That might be a phrase. Grave straits. In the gravy straits? And we were four years ago? Hell no. The country's in grave straits. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Uh, yeah, that was a total fucking waste of time. Just saying, for the record.